So I mean, with your with your upbringing and you know your parents and everything, um, how does that relate with you bringing up your children? Well, with me, I thought I'm never gonna beat them because my dad never beat us. He beat my mum, but she used to beat us. So I just thought I'm gonna grow up and I'm never gonna beat my kids. But by not doing that, like I said, I might not have beat them, but I've affected them in other ways. Like with I, my when I was in my cups when I was drinking way too much. Like I um, and so much things nearly happened. I remember my son. He was trying to wake me up once, and my eldest boy, and he nearly poured hot water on me trying to wake me up. My mum walked in like just at the right time. I've been found in dubious positions as well. I remember like they used to send me videos of how I, the states I used to get in, which I used to hate seeing. And Is that family members? Or yeah, or yeah. Like? And I'd like, there was one video where, um, <laughs> I don't even know if I should say this. Oh. Oh, I found some drugs at home and I took this stuff and I remember I, well, I found it in my son's room, basically. So basically I was thinking, hmm, I'm going to just, I'm going to tidy up my son's room like the great parent I am. Now, he was 18 at the time, so I had no business being in his room. But anyway, the stuff that I found in there, I ended up taking. And I remember there was this video of me with my like, Knickers hanging around my ankles, not coming out my nose, me bending forward. And, um, and the next day, the door knocked, banging the door. Like, and I was thinking, who's that knocking the door like it's the police? And it basically was the police. <laughs> They'd come to search my son's room because he'd been arrested for a possession with intent to supply. And I was thinking, oh, thank God, at least I snorted all the drugs the day before. I'll never <laughs> find anything here. And um, that, was after, that was after I had 11 months clean at that time. And I found these drugs and I took them. So I threw away all my clean time, because once you use again, you have to count for the beginning. Yeah. And then I only relapse for one day, and they say, if you're an addict, you can't stop using. So I, I, I only relapsed for one day, and I didn't relapse for about three months. I'm thinking, well, I'm not an addict, because I only used once, like that one day. Yeah. And then so I went to Amsterdam to celebrate, and I ended up frigging, yeah, just smashing the granny out of everything, basically. And I just couldn't yeah. stop using at all. And that, that's why I had to go into treatment that time. I had to be taken out of society because the kids were on the atmosphere register again. They were going to put them on a special guardianship order where my mum would have them until they were 16, which might not have been a bad idea now because they're sucking me dry at the moment, but it doesn't matter. Everything is as it should be. Um, so yeah, and luckily I had my mum and their dads to help because otherwise I would have lost them. I know people that have actually lost their kids and they haven't got them back. So I'm really lucky. Like I said, God was smiling on me. A lot of stuff happened for me to kick me into gear, but I just feel like... Um, I had a lot of chances, even social services, like they don't want to take the kids from you. They want you to keep your kids. But but luckily I had the help. Otherwise, they would have been gone. They were off the at-risk register once I was in treatment because I wasn't seen as a harm to them. There was a t I remember there was a time when I wasn't even allowed to be left alone, unsupervised with my two youngest kids. And when I think about things as they are today and how they were back, then I'm thinking, wow, is this the same person? Is it? It's like a Jekyll and Hyde. I'm all right now, but you put a drink or a drug in me, I'm like different. I'm really different. And then once I start, it's like you release the addiction all over again, so you can't even stop once you've started. So I'm so grateful to be clean, sober and serene. Just for today, you've always got to throw that little get out clause in there because there's been people that have been 30 years, they start drinking again and then they can't even get back. Some of them die. I had a friend who, she was four years sober and she drank in the August and she was dead in the June. No, drank in the June and was dead in the August. And that was at four years sober. And it's like, what is that insidious insanity that makes you think the drink is a good idea? And it's because it's an illness that tells you it hasn't got it. It tells you that it will be different next time, or it wasn't that bad. And it was terrible. There's so much carnage, but it will still, you believe that lie, it will be different next time. And it's never any different. It's always the same. It's worse, actually. So I'm just glad I've learned not to listen to that voice because it wants to keep me lonely and kill me slowly. And I'm just not giving it another second of my life. I'm really not. I'm done. My well, best friend, and it turned on me. So your friend had a drink in June and was dead, dead in, in the August. Dead in August, yeah, and that was 13 years ago. Was that from it? overdose from drinking? Yeah, or? yeah. Oh, wow. She had to, she had a build-up of ketones or acetones in her body. And they think that alcohol... I think alcohol is the worst drug out of all of them because it affects every area of your body. You, there's people who've got wet brain, they've got... Um, you get... Yeah, you get so much... Um, I don't even know why alcohol is legal. Sometimes I just feel like... Especially because I'm not allowed to drink it. That's why I won't get married. I'm thinking, I'm not paying for other people to watch people drink the drink that I can't drink. Plus, it costs too much to get divorced, so...
We've been together 24 years, so that's my oh. point. My point at all.